Welcome to the Shaman's View. Welcome friends. It's good to be with you again. Uh, today we're going to be exploring the Shaman's four levels of creation, the four levels in which reality and which truth manifest in. Um, so before we get into the topic of our, of our meeting today and of our conversation, I'd like for us to do a short meditation together. So let me get my drum. <clears throat> and I'm going to ask you to join me in a breathing meditation, inhaling to a count of three, exhaling to a count of five, so that we can reset our fight or flight response. We can step up to that higher ego brain, the brain of ego, the mind of ego that can see the curvature of the earth and see the small details below as well. So take a deep breath with me, inhale deeply, and release it, exhale. And let's inhale to a count of seven. Inhale to a count of three, and exhale to a count of five. to three, two, three, exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, inhaling to three, two, three, exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, and holding the breath empty for a moment. Inhaling to three, one, two, three, holding the breath full for an instant. Exhaling to five, two, three, four, five, holding the breath empty. Inhaling to three, one, two, three, holding the breath full, pausing, exhaling to five, two, three, four, Five. And continue with me for a few more moments. Inhaling deeply, deep breath, and exhaling, releasing the breath. For many years, I studied with shamans in the Andes and in the Amazon, medicine men and women who were masters, masters at understanding the structure of reality and the structure of life itself particularly the Amazon shamans, and these were the ayahuasca masters. And they had plenty of leisure time. When you live in the jungle, you work an average of two to three hours a day. When you live in New York, you work an average of eight to 12 hours a day. But in the Amazon, everything is available. Food is plentiful. There's time to visit. There's time to, there's no distant horizon. There are only trees. So you cannot feel the urge to go and explore that distant horizon, to set sail on your ship to see where the sun sets, because it sets over the forest right next to you, where you are. Where you are is where you are. And they have time. They have time to contemplate and to study the structure of reality itself. Whereas in the West, we use the mind to study the cosmos, the shamans used the mind to study the mind. They turned it within. Instead of understanding and attempting to find the formulas for how the outer world works, 
they turn the mind within to understand how the mind works and how the mind perceives reality, interacts with reality, and co-creates reality. So they discovered that there were four levels of reality. And it took me many years to understand this because, of course, the language of the shamans is very different from the language of quantum physics that we're familiar with. Imagine trying to go to an Aboriginal person, to an Amazonian shaman dressed in feathers with a spear and telling them about differential equations or telling them about chaos theory that butterfly that flapped his wings in Beijing and caused a storm in the Caribbean. And I did that. I tried that with my mentor one time. I said to my mentor, you know, that butterfly, this is chaos theory, that, that flapped his wings in, in Beijing caused a storm in the Indian Ocean. And he said to me, show me. And I said, that's physics. What do you mean show you? He said, yeah, I had a brand new PhD at that time. And he said, come on, flap your little doctor wings and heal someone in India. I said, I can't do that. He said, I can. Because of course, in the shamanic traditions, which are feminine traditions, we differentiate between information and wisdom. Information is knowing that water is H2O, Wisdom is being able to make it rain. Information is knowing about chaos theory and wisdom is being able to heal someone 10,000 miles away. To do this, they were consummate observers of nature and students particularly of the nature of reality. Not the spotted frogs that are so magnificent in the Amazon or the colored parrots or the cockatoos or the monkeys. This is what we're fascinated with. The shamans, of course, they knew the birds, they lived with them. They were fascinated with the mind itself, much in the same way that the Tibetans and uh, Himalayan um, wisdom keepers were fascinated by the mind. And they discovered that there were four levels of reality, four different levels of which reality manifested. And it took me a very long time to understand this because they would say, well, the first level is the level of serpent. And in serpent, you're crawling on the earth. You cannot lift your head up to see above your own shadow. You've got your belly against the mother, which is beautiful, but you're coiled up, cold blooded, no feeling, no sensation. And I understood with time that they were talking about the level of serpent, of jaguar, of hummingbird, and of eagle. So let me take you through these because this is a very powerful understanding of how the mind creates our experience of reality. And as you get to the higher level, how the mind co-creates reality with spirit. So at the level of serpent, Everything is exactly what it seems to be. Everything is what it appears to be. And this is the level that, that most people live at, where they take reality for granted. That what you observe, what you measure, what you, can, what you see and what you can look at is what reality is. Now, the level of Jaguar is the level above it. And the level of Jaguar, you understand that nothing is only what it seems to be. And of course, we only need to look at politics. We need to look at the people's deep vows and commitments and swearing to speak the truth. And we know that nothing is only what it appears to be. So serpent is the level of physical reality, of the physical body. And we need to attend to physical reality. We need to attend to the body. We need to care for it. We need to feed it organic, natural, seasonal. Be sure you detoxify. Know where your water and your food comes from. Know what's happening in the world. How to maintain yourself healthy in the face of disease and practice health. At the level of Jaguar, if the serpent is the level of the body, Jaguar is the level of the mind. 
Jaguar is the level of the mind. And we know that the mind organizes the body to create health or create disease. We know that we can create psychosomatic disease and perhaps we even have the capability of creating health with our minds. But how do we do that? So the mind is the realm of the emotions and the feelings. And we know that stress is 70% of any health condition or illness, that the stress factor, the psychosomatic component of any condition, whether it be a virus or cancer or heart disease, is stress related. It's trauma, originates from trauma. And this is what happens at the level of the mind of Jaguar. We need to heal the trauma that lives within us. And, and not only the trauma that we may have experienced, our birth trauma or the trauma, the trauma when we were young, but the trauma that was experienced by our parents because the stress hormones go right through the placental barrier. So half of your belief systems you already got when you were in the womb by listening to the conversations that were going on around you, by the cortisol and adrenaline flowing into your system and creating neural networks in your brain that predispose you to trust men or to not trust them, to trust the world, to support you, to feel that the universe was going to cover your back, to feel that you could trust people or not. We need to heal and repair the emotions at the level of Jaguar. Now, the shamans say that the only way to do that is to follow Jaguar on the journey beyond death, beyond fear, so that you can become fearless, so that you can discover that you're none of those things that happened to you or to your mother or to your father, that they were simply events that occurred and the stories no longer live within you. In fact, when it comes to the study of trauma, the shamans have a very unique perception, which is that trauma is not what actually happened to you. Trauma is a way that story lives within you. And once you change the story, once you are able to get the wisdom out of the story, once you're able to understand the gift that the universe was offering you in a very strange and painful way, then the trauma heals. So the level of Jaguar, nothing is only what it appears to be. And we need to understand this because today we're living in a world that's in, that nothing is what it's saying it is. Nothing from politics to medicine to health I had a client come to me a couple of weeks ago, a patient with a terrible diagnosis. And the first thing I said to them is, you're not your diagnosis. You're not a liver condition. You're not an MRI. You're not a heart study. You're not a blood lab. You're a miracle. Of course, these are the kind of curses that medicine gives people. Every diagnosis, remember, is a curse and you've got to break free from it because diseases don't exist. At the level of Jaguar, you understand that illnesses do not exist. Sick people exist, but illnesses, these collection of symptoms, they're not real. And the minute you subscribe to them, of course, they become real. Now, at the level of Jaguar, it's a level that sorcerers operate. They operate at that level because they know that the minute you buy into a negative belief structure, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So when shamans go to heal sorcery, whether it be psychic attack or intrusive entities or, or low-level spirits from the lower world, hungry ghosts or demons, the, the, the wise shamans, the wise elders, not the opportunistic shaman healers that keep you coming back the next week and the next week to take your money and your sanity, battling your demons, they show you that you have to stop battling your demons. 
And then you have to start feeding them. Start feeding your demons and turning them into allies. Receiving the gift that they have brought you, the teaching, the lesson. And then you break free of all of that negativity that we're exposed to all the time. Because that negativity only works through affinities. It's only because we have an affinity and somewhere for it to hook that we get entangled. The minute we heal the hook, there's no entanglement. Jaguar heals by journeying beyond death. And this is the topic for another conversation, but the shamans of the Americas and of the Himalayas, the Tibetans, were consummate map makers of the journey beyond death. So we have serpent where everything is exactly as it seems to be. And then we have jaguar where nothing is only what it seems to be. And then we have the level of hummingbird. This is a third level. And this is the level of the soul. So in the same way that the body is informed by the mind, the mind is informed by the soul. The soul informs the mind that informs the body. And the language of the body of serpent is chemical, is physical. The language of the mind are words. The language of the soul are images, poetry, drums, ceremony, candles. Images are the language of the soul. And we know that I've, when I've worked with world-class athletes, they will visualize themselves going through a ski run. And in that way, they will be training their body and their muscles. They know the power of visualization. Now, many of us have tried affirmations. Affirmations work at the level of Jaguar, of the mind, of words. And we know that we need to repeat an affirmation 10,000 times. At the level of hummingbird, if you want to change something, you only have to visualize it three or four times because images are the language of the soul. Now at the level of the body of serpent, you have to try to change that habit over and over again endlessly. Whereas you can shift through your visualization, which is what we call intentionality, at the level of hummingbird very, very rapidly. Hummingbird, at hummingbird, things are exactly what they are. We get to the fundamental level of reality, where we find the absolute truth, not relative truth, which is the truth of the lower levels, the relative truth of the moment, where it was honorable and truthful that women should not have the right to vote. At that time, that was the, the morality. And, but of course, at the level of hummingbird, it was never right. At the level of hummingbird, does the slavery that's been happening in America and in the world, really, for the last 500 years is unacceptable and is still continuing. And, it's, and we're educating our children into a system that insists on you compromising your soul, enslaving your soul and selling it for money. So the level of hummingbird, things are their level of ultimate truth. This is the underlying level of reality, where things are as they are. And the level above that is the level of ego. But before we get to ego, let me just make a brief stop in hummingbird. The reason that, that this is known as the level of hummingbird is because the hummingbird is able to practice stillness even in flight. So they can be absolutely still while moving at 100 miles an hour. So you must master the stillness of the mind, the level below, in order to access the level of hummingbird, of no mind. You've got to lose your mind, literally. Lose your mind to come to your senses. And at the level of hummingbird, then you see reality in a pristine and total way, an absolute way. At the level of hummingbird, also you have to learn to go for the nectar, to go for the nectar. 
when I was doing my training with the shamans, I trained as a psychologist initially, where you worked on your stuff. You, and you, we've got to work on our issues and in our things. We cannot gloss them over. But I was so accustomed to working on my stuff that my hummingbird on the way to the flowers would always stop by the poop pile to, so I could work on my stuff. And I had to learn that I had to go directly for the honey. Go for the honey. Go for the nectar. You've already worked on yourself so much. And now you can step into a higher level where it's not about you working on yourself. It's not about you anymore. It's about something much greater than we are. So at the level of the soul of Hummingbird, we discover our sacred journey. And if we can select a journey that is sacred, that will change our beliefs in the level of the mind, and it will change our behaviors at the level of serpent. So when you install something at Hummingbird, the level of the soul, Jaguar, the mind changes, serpent, the body transforms. So part, fundamental part of shamanic energy medicine, what I teach my students is that we have to help our clients, our patients, our loved ones come up with a sacred map that healing is about a sacred journey and not about an intervention. And when we find that sacred map, then we can do the interventions and they fit within a much bigger context than just taking the pain away. Above the level of hummingbird is the level of eagle. The ego is, um, has extraordinary medicine and power throughout the Americas and throughout the world, literally. It's been used as an emblem of power and of vision and of and every, in so many different cultures and traditions. At the level of ego, you enter into the level of pure energy so that you, you're beyond ultimate reality, which is what happens at the level of hummingbird. You are in the field, you're in the quantum field, because until the level of hummingbird, there is a you, Alberto is there, that understands the fundamental nature of reality. But at the level of ego, there's only reality. You're no longer there, but you're witnessing it and becoming one with it. It's like that beautiful poem by Rumi where he says to the beloved, for I have ceased to exist. Only you are here. Only you are here. I have ceased to exist. But of course, what continues is that I that is so expansive, that is no longer identified with Alberto, with my trauma, with my pain, with my dog or my children or my house. <clears throat> is that that self that is transcendent. This is the level of ego. And the language of ego is pure energy. The language of hummingbird are images. The language of the jaguar are words and the language of serpent of the body are is chemical. The supplements, the, the nutrients, the protein, the diet, the belief structures at the level of jaguar the level of hummingbird, the sacred map, and at the level of ego, your identity as one, the oneness experience with the quantum field. And from that level, you can change anything. And this is the level of sacred ceremony. <clears throat> this is a level where we are truly one, where there's only one of us. There's only one. Oneness is all there is. And from that level, we can dream the world into being. At all the lower levels, we can have our own unique experience of reality. And we can modify whether the reality that we're experiencing is painful or pleasurable simply by changing our attitude. But at the very highest levels, we're co-creating. We're taking part in the great choreography of dreaming the world into being. But my mentor believed that we were dreaming the world into being all the time. I was a young man, I was studying with this old Indian sage, 
And I was wondering, why were you, why, why are you teaching me? I'm a graduate student from the University of California that's totally ignorant about nature, about spirit. And he said, I'm teaching you for your generations, for your people. And what he was teaching me was that given the times that we're living in, that were foretold as the time of the Pachakuti, of the great renewing of the earth, it was important that we learn how to operate at all of these four levels, that we understand that healing and transformation has to happen at all four levels, not just at the very ethereal, energetic, and at the level of pure light, but at the level of the body and of our society and of our economics and how we grow our food but not only at the physical level, not only at the level of the body, but also at the level of the field. There's a huge transformation happening in the invisible world, the world of the quantum field. And it's a transformation that is going to impact absolutely every living system in the planet, all of humanity, all of the creatures, the entire ecosystem, and will begin a new chapter for all of us if we have the courage to dream with beauty and to dream with courage and with, and with strength so that we can dream into being a world that our children's children and all the creatures can live harmoniously in. I hope that this has been helpful and insightful to you. And this is why ceremony is so important. The fire ceremonies that we've done together, take it to the fire because there we are working in the field, installing in the field a frequency and a standing wave of peace and deep transformation. And of course, we are the first ones to benefit from it. And then it spreads out to all of our loved ones and to humanity. Thank you for joining me in the Shaman's View. Take it to the fire, we have a big, big uh, time coming up in June 20th when we have the solstice. This is a powerful time. I invite you to join me in a solstice ceremony. I will post a link uh, here in uh, the Facebook page with hundreds of shamans from around the world and healers and medicine people. June 20th. Come and join us with a candle and a small stick. Blessings and I will see you then.